Mathematics Ordinary Level Paper 1 2023 Part 3 Let's continue with the next question. Question number 17. You see a diagram, okay? And then they ask you, each of the lengths 18, 10 and 8 is measured correct to the nearest centimeter. Calculate the upper bound for the perimeter of the ship. So what jumps to your mind is limits of accuracy. So let's start with that question. So you will find this in the textbook, in the Y equals MX plus C mathematics textbook, part one, and that is limits. Okay, I um, just want to show you there. It's in chapter one, in part one textbook and that's limits of accuracy and that will be look on page 31 and look at example 25 okay according to me the biggest catch out in this sum was that they did not give you this length. Okay, so you can start with your upper and your lower bounds, but the first thing is you had to notice that they did not give you this length. You can work it out, yes. How can I work it out? I can just check this one. Can I just show you here? I can check this one, and I can check this plus this must be equal to this one. So if I say 18 minus 10, I will see that this one here will be 8. Okay, so this was also, so all the sides must be given. Now, because it's correct to the nearest centimeter, so it's the nearest one, and I, if I divide it to its 0 0.5 that I'm going to add and subtract. So I can actually, for the three, there is three different ones, but I can say, okay, let's just go there. So if it's 18, the upper bound and the lower bound. So it's 18.5 and it's 17.5. And then um, at the same for 10, the upper bound, and that's going to be 10.5. And the lower bound is going to be 9.5. And then 8. And the upper bound is going to be 8.5. And the lower bound is going to be 7.5. Okay, so every time I subtract and add. Now, if if it's if I'm just want it's only addition, so I'm going to start here and I'm going to add, 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 add. Now, if it's only addition and I want the upper bound, I will just work with the upper bounds. So let's start at this red. So to, to, to get the upper bound of the perimeter, I'm just going to add all. So I'm going to say it's 18.5 plus, and now it's at the 8, so it's 8.5. But don't forget this 8 also, another 8.5, then a 10.5. Then I'm at this 10, another 10.5, and another 18.5. Okay, try not to write in. And if I add everything up, or I could have said I'm just going to, there was actually two of every one. If you see, there was two. But I was getting on the dot 75. So if you look, there was two 18.5s, there was two 8s, and there was two 10 10.5s, but it doesn't matter. You could have worked it anyway. So let's just go to the exam report. Let's see if we are here already. Yes, this is question 17. So question 17, this question was poorly answered. Most candidates managed to work out the upper bounds of the individual measures. However, when adding to find the perimeter, they omitted to anticipate the missing values and a common wrong answer was, I think that 8 was missing. Some candidates find the perimeter of the shape first 
and then find the upper bounds in which is wrong. Okay, the basic understanding of limits of accuracy seems to be problematic. So it's a very short part in the textbook, work through it again. So if they see all that upper and lower bounds, but at the end it was 75. Okay, so let's just go there. Um, so basically, uh, let's just see for what will they give marks. So they gave marks for that one. And then by adding everything up and then coming to, and oh, I made a mistake in this one. Don't forget to rewrite because they want, don't leave the unanswered space open. So don't make the same mistake as I did here. Okay, rewrite that in the answer space. Okay, the next one, question number 18. Calculate the total surface area uh, of this cuboid. Now let's see where in the textbook I will find this. And if I look here, I will say this was in the textbook, part two, the second, the thin one. It's in chapter 10. And then it's geometry. That's chapter 10. And then you can look on page 520. There in the table, you will see the different figures. Okay. So calculate the total surface area of this cuboid. Now you can just check there. So to find the total surface area, it's going to be... Now I like to write the free values down. I write 8.5. Then I'm going for 5.2. And then I go for 4.6. And then I take the first two. And then I take the last two. And then I take the first and the last. So in this case, the first two will be 8.5 times 5.2. Then the next two will be 5.2 times 4.6. And then the next two, and I'm going to write it draw the year, is the first and the last. 8.5 times 4.6. If you write it like this, the first two, the last two, the first and the last, then it's very easy. And then I'm going to get that 88.4 plus the, four, don't approximate, 47.84, then it's premature approximation. And then 78.2. And if I add it up, it's 214.44. And this is actually an exact answer. Did you see that? So basically, I just want to quickly uh, get, see if I can move this. Yes. So this is exact. So I will just say 214.44. But I see if somebody wrote 214, I they also marked it as correct. So they gave one mark, and uh, we will now check, but it, for two of every time and then for the final. But let's go and see what the report is saying to us. Okay, so if I look at the report, uh, this will be question 18, so I just go one back. So poorly answered, and it's, it's actually sad because it's coming from grade eight and nine. The majority of candidates calculate the volume, oh no, of the cubit instead of the total surface area. The common wrong answer was this. It's important that teachers expose the candidates to the various methods of calculating the total surface area. Apply the concept of nets of the correct formula should be emphasized. So there is this or this and then um, basically for showing the method there and then as I said, it wasn't exact, but they also marked it correct if you said 214. Okay, let's go back to the question paper. After we finish with that page, so let's go to the next page. So we make it a little bit bigger. There's nice two questions. So I'm a bit at the geometry side now. Oh, this is still, um, this is Victor's first. So let's just turn it around. This is question 19. Where will I find it in the textbook? And let me just show you quickly where we will find it. Um, you will find it part two. And that's vectors. 
and then it's it's very this is just multiply the first one a vector by a scalar and that's on page 586 okay so basically this is the vector r s so it's free and this was very very easy it's just three times negative three and four and that would have gave me negative nine and three times four is twelve don't forget to write it here negative nine and twelve that is and then if you want to go uh, now first to that one calculate the magnitude number b this is b so calculate the magnitude of a vector and that will be page 578 and that will be example 17 so if I look there um, so this is magnitude so it's almost like uh, Pythagorean uh, um, yes Pythagoras theorem so I'm just going to say the magnitude you can look on that page of this vector and because <laughs> yo, this is not nice let me rather oh, that was a bit better so that's negative 3 square plus 4 square and that is going to be 9 plus 16 which is the square root of 25 and that is 5 and don't forget to fill it in there okay so one you will definitely get this is just one but one for the method one for the answer but let's just go to the examination report so if I look at the examination report this is question number 19 I think we are finished here it's the next one 18 and then number 19 it's usually because students um, don't come to this part okay although this is very nice though this one was well answered some can lift out the brackets don't forget the brackets it's a vector while others wrote their answer as a fraction don't make that it's a vector and then number b is moderately answered common wrong answers candidates should be encouraged to always enter negative three on their calc and even consider that to calculate the modulus the negative is not needed okay five so please don't come to a negative there a negative times a negative is a positive and that's why we get five okay let's go to the next question question number 21 the diagram shows triangles A, B, C and D. From the diagram, write down a special name of triangle D. Now, where will we find this? You will find this on page, uh, part 1. And that's at geometry. And that's chapter 8. Okay. And there you will find the spelling of that word, 3, 6, 5. Okay, because if you look at this figure, all the sides are not equal. It's only these two sides that's equal. So it's an isosceles triangle. And please concentrate on that, that spelling. It's an, I just want to go to blue. It's an isosceles. I sos. It's S O S and then Silas Triangle. Okay. Now, two triangles which are congruent. Now, where will you find the word congruent in my mathematics books? You will find that also, chapter, also part one, chapter eight, geometry. And that is congruency or congruence and similarity. And that's on page three, four, 
6. So two triangles which are congruent. Now the word congruent means they fit exactly like a puzzle onto each other. Now if you look at this one, if you look at this one, and this it's just a bit turned around, but you can see that they will fit onto each other. So that will be triangle A and C. Let's go to the examination report. Okay, question number 21. Well answers, although the question did not judge on the quality of spelling. Most of the candidates simply could not spell isosceles. So again, that spell test that will really help. So then moderate answer, most candidates did not know the meaning or implication of the word congruent and only listed uh, one triangle as an answer. It's clear from the question that the teachers need to clear um, terminologies and notations during the teaching. So it's A and C and it's just one mark and another mark. And we will continue with the question paper in the next part. All these videos refer to the Y equals MX plus C textbooks, the number one mathematics textbook used in Namibian schools. For more information on these textbooks, visit the Straight Line Publishing website. All Y equals MX plus C to success textbooks are available in the NEED catalogue of the Ministry of Education. Schools can order these using their yearly budget for textbooks, with the process typically starting mid-year. Make sure your learners have a copy of the Y equals MX plus C mathematics textbook used by the top schools in Namibia in front of them in 2025. A final point. If you are in the position, I want to encourage you to buy your own personal copy of the Y equals MX plus C mathematics textbook. These textbooks are available at the following bookshops. Remember, success in mathematics comes from hard work, perseverance and the courage to face challenges head on. Good luck with your final 2024 examination.